Ryan Walter is looking to rebuild the Purdue football program, coming off five wins in his inaugural season there in West Lafayette. We got Bryce Vance on the line from uh, Behind the Rail, the Football Purdue uh, podcast there on Believe Network. Your thoughts before we dive into this recruiting class about Ryan Walter's uh, first season, how that went. Of course, we just cited the record. New quarterback coming in from Texas in mm -hmm. Hudson Card. Maybe too many turnovers in play for one thing. Just your thoughts about how the season went and if Ryan Walters has this thing going despite the record in the right direction. You have to look at what left the program um, and followed, you know, or exited the program or followed Jeff Brom down to Louisville. Um, and, and before this season, before this past season even started, um, he was coming in, you know, he did bring in a, a big transfer uh, portal quarterback in Hudson card and he had his moments. Um, but you know, it wasn't without, you know, mistakes, uh, turnovers, injuries. Um, it felt like, the offensive line um, was just battling um, uphill the entire season to try to get at full strength. And when they were at full strength is probably when they played their toughest competition, you know, with the likes of Iowa, Ohio state, Michigan, kind of all in a, in a month span. Um, and they really struggled uh, during that time. Uh, but then once they, once they kind of um, got their um, offensive line or, or figured out a, a game plan um, that worked, um, which was running the ball, um, with Tyrone Tracy Jr., uh, Devin Mockaby, uh, it really seemed to get them going offensively. Their defense, I thought, played a lot better than what the numbers will show you. Uh, but it, it just it felt like they were put in tough position time after time with the turnovers that they had um, on the on the offensive side of the ball. Fumbles were huge for Mockaby. Um, he got those fixed um, probably about a third of the way through the season. Probably had one more. Uh, I think through the last, you know, eight or so games, which was, which is beneficial. But I, I just thought there was a, a tug and uh, a tug of war uh, between what this offense wanted to be at the beginning of the season and what they actually turned out uh, to be because um, they wanted to be an air raid type offense, um, but they just really weren't built for that. They don't really have the, they didn't really have the skill positions um, settled or healthy uh, all season long to really do that. So they kind of had to change on the fly of what they were offensively. And that really, you know, changed the, the course of what this season was was thought to be. Fumbles, field goal kicking, that was an issue. Worst yep. uh, percentage in the country. And also an interesting approach to out-of-conference scheduling. I, I credited Purdue a number of times throughout the season for not necessarily playing like elite teams outside the conference or a murderer's row, but still no gimme wins, playing three capable opponents. Uh, that is unlike pretty much anybody in the country. Uh, so that we'll see how that, uh, obviously transforms going forward with the uh, more difficult uh, games ahead in the big 10 with the influx of the four teams from the pac 12. All right. We've got a recruiting class where 25 have signed that letter of intent. And I'm looking to see if anybody's still out there. No, it looks like everybody is signed that has committed. So you're initial thoughts about this class yeah i think big picture i think it's it's a good sign uh it's a good direction of where you can expect ryan walters in this program to go they finish 29th overall uh in the composite rankings on 247 um and that's you know pretty darn good um when i think last year at, you know with ryan walters coming in towards the end of the year um you really didn't feel like that uh, they had a whole lot of time to keep that class together or put that class together and, and finish it Whereas they had this entire season to to make sure this class was up to the par um, that they could potentially reach, and I think you're starting to see the signs of what this um, recruiting staff or the staff wants to do. Obviously, they want to bring in uh, a lot of talent. They want to bring in uh, different you know sizes of of players and and the players that they fit their schemes going forward. Um, and I think they tried to do that during the in the transfer portal last year to try to plug those holes, but. I really think that we're starting to see what the vision is uh, for this program going forward um, with it, with a, a solid recruiting class. You know, I thought, you know, being 29th, but you're you're eighth or ninth in the Big Ten, depending on where you look. So you're still kind of middle of the pack in your own conference, which, you know, I think that's where Purdue is, is probably going to be um, with the influx of the, of the four teams from the Pac-12, like you said. So you're you know going to be trying to pushing up against that ceiling as much as possible. And if you can creep up into the back half of the top 25 every so often, I think that's that's you know pretty good. So 
you're inching towards that. Um, and I think, you know, if you can start to stack some of these classes that are in this range, I think you'll see uh, a, a product on the field that'll, you know, push, you know, eight to, to, to nine wins potentially. Um, depending on what they get out of the draw on their schedule in the Big Ten schedule. Bryce, we see three, four stars, according to 247 Sports. Uh, who are the guys that you've looked at that you're excited about? You know, I think we start off at the top with with Coy Beasley. I think he's a guy, um, you know, he might be a little undersized, you know, at 5'10", 170, but he's played um, in, in a tough um, conference, a tough, you know, area of football in Ohio coming out of LaSalle. So I, I think he'll be, you know, pretty seasoned and, and ready to go. Maybe even day one, we saw Dylan Thieneman um, come in and start as a, as a true freshman last year. So I would expect Coy Beasley to uh, compete uh, for, for a starting job, at least, uh, you know, to be on the two deep. Uh, I, I think that he could definitely come in and compete for a job. I think he's got the speed um, to, to compete. He's, you know, a track star. I think you know, in the hundred, he ran like the 10 four. So he's got a lot of speed. That you know, this Purdue team needs um, is is one of their keys that I think that they wanted to hit on and and then you you know you don't look too further down at, at Luke Williams another safety um, playing out of out of Naperville so uh, I think you know with him being a, a bigger guy you kind of see of of what they want as far as where they're going to play these guys you know Coy Beasley probably fits that that's you know similar with Dylan Thieneman being a speedster that has a lot of range can, you know, play sideline to sideline. Whereas Luke Williams might be that, you know, t thumper type where you can come up, come down and, and play in the run game like Sanusi Kane did uh, last year. So I think, you know, you start with those two guys at, at the top and, and really starting to build up the secondary. That was a, a, a pretty big problem for this Purdue defense last year. As you listen to Ryan Walters, uh, and the questions that he has posed about his recruiting approach, uh, your thoughts about how that has compared to previous Purdue coaches. Of course, Jeff Brom being the guy that did a remarkable job in lifting a program that was winning, mm -hmm. whatever the, the rate was, it was something like three and 33 over the previous 36 big 10 games to a big 10 championship game appearance and to consistent bowl play. And now Ryan Walters comes in obviously as a, uh, a guy that formed that Illinois defense into a top unit. Uh, but where does he feel like he needs to go to get the best fits for Purdue football and the best talent? Yeah, I think you're, you're starting to see, you know, obviously they're going to be a big players in the Midwest, but I think that they're trying to, you know, make headway into, uh, you know, states like Texas, like Florida, like Alabama, where, you know, football is, is much more, um, played at a higher caliber uh, than what it is in the Midwest. You have, you know, pockets here and there. I mentioned, obviously, Ohio is 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 a huge one. And I think that, you know, they should be taking advantage of that. If they can get, you know, a couple of the top guys in Indiana like they have, um, I, I think that that would bode well for them. I mean, you're competing against uh, IU and, and, and Notre Dame. Um, and occasionally, you know, Ohio State will try to come in and, and steal one of those guys, Michigan as well, the top uh, players in Indiana. But if you can you know, get some of those guys that, you know, that'll help you um, as far as speed, I think on, on out wide um, and in the, in the secondary, I think they want to be big uh, along the lines. Now, I think that we saw that in the transfer portal last year with getting a couple of guys that had SEC experience. And I think we're starting to see that, you know, obviously this is more national signing day, but you're also starting to see it in the transfer portal class that they've already started with, um, you know, picking up big physical offensive linemen and defensive linemen. And I, and I think that's what you want to see um, as, as far as some of these uh, recruits that they're getting um, is is you're starting to see you want speed in the in the back end and in, in the, you know, in the trenches, they want to be big and physical uh, because they when they were big and physical um, along the defensive front, that was probably the, the bright spot of this Purdue team last year was their front seven and how they were able to get after the quarterback. You had two guys near the top. Um, and one guy at the top um, of leaders in sacks and pressures and Nick Scorton. Um, so if you can continue to build um, those guys, as long as getting more pressure on the edge, I think that's probably um, what you want to be able to, to build upon with this roster. Bryce Vance is here, folks, talking Purdue football for us. Uh, behind the rail, uh, Purdue football on the Believe Network is his podcast. Please join him right there. We will have that information back on the screen here in a second. 
Uh, Bryce, uh, you started to run down the eight transfers, I think, for Big Ten fans that are most familiar with Reggie Love, the running back from Illinois, who was rarely a starter there but played a lot, got a lot of carries, was a backup that played a lot and was a key contributor there. Just your thoughts about uh, his addition, everybody else there in the transfer list that uh, could make an impact. Yeah, I think with, with Reggie Love, I think you're looking for a big physical back. Um, obviously, I think they 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 feel comfortable with the with the speed that they have at that position. But if you can get a complimentary back and Reggie Love, that's a big physical guy um, with with you know being over two hundred over two hundred pounds. Um, obviously, Ryan Walters knows Reggie Love um, well from his time at Illinois, um, so he has that connection there. And it was probably a, a seamless you know conversation. Hey, we have a a need here with Tyrone Tracy, you know, leaving. Um, you could be coming in and Dylan Downing leaving as well. You could have a, you know, a real, you know, shot at, at sharing a lot of carries with Devin Mockaby. So I thought that would probably, was probably an easy pitch um, for Ryan Walters to make to Reggie Love. And I think what um, they've tried to do, I think is what I, what I just spoke to is as far as the guys that are on the edge with Shiti Salah, uh, CJ Madden, you know, you guys that have experience, um, that, you know, are, are guys that are coming off the edge and you want to build up that because um, you need to build up depth uh, along that position. You can't just have Nick Scorton um, and, and that be your only guy um, and, and you know, have that just be, you know, the only person that's creating, you know, a bunch of pressure because um, they really struggled um, outside of, of a couple of guys. It was mostly just two guys. And if those two guys are, are wearing down late in the season or, or not getting a whole lot of a lot of pressure you need to build up the depth and i think that's what they did um with with bringing those couple of edge guys right there um but then you also see the offensive line i think that is that is building as well um and you have multiple um and multiple guys coming in um that have experience at, at different levels and we saw that experiment kind of play out last year with purdue i don't know if that's necessarily you know what purdue envisions going forward i think they want to probably build um within the high school ranks um with that with um you know the offensive line and you know we've seen a lot of teams try to rebuild offensive lines through the transfer portal and, and it's and it's really tough to do uh, but if, if purdue is is needing uh, an immediate need um and building up depth because after their starters went down or their starters didn't start the season with them last year they really struggled to to get things going offensively and if they can protect hudson card um, just a, a little bit longer and not have him make his his make him use his legs as often as he did. Uh, I feel like that this offensive uh, philosophy can take different shapes or it can just improve on what they've been um, or what they were last season. Folks, we churn out uh, the college football content uh, here every day, all day, live streams, 15, 16 channels, whatever the number is here at the Voice of College Football. So if you enjoy the content, please subscribe here. Get on over to the various team channels and like the video. Check out uh, Bryce's work there at uh, Believe Network. It's a behind-the-rail Purdue football podcast right there. Uh, Bryce, before we let you go, I'm interested in just uh, the outlook of many of these programs in the Big Ten uh, with the influx of the four teams from the Pac-12. Purdue's got an interesting history and I've got a few years on you, so I've seen more of it. But uh, if they get the right guy in place, i.e. Jeff Brom, i.e. Joe Tiller, uh, and you could go on to Leon Burnett going back to the 70s and 80s, you can win at Purdue. You mm -hmm. can win at Purdue. You can be a competitive team. You may not be competitive nationally, but uh, win seven, eight, nine games consistently. Obviously, they've had the bottoming out of the Danny Hope and the Daryl Hazel era as well. Uh, just your thoughts about how difficult it is with the incoming teams from the Pac-12, the current situation with the heavy hitters in the Big Ten, and what the hope is for Purdue and its fans to be to be relevant and to be somewhat competitive in this conference. Yeah, and... I, I don't expect them. I expect them to probably have a similar, you know, record output next year, because if you look ahead at that schedule, it's absolutely brutal with, you know, facing Oregon, Notre Dame in the non-conference. I believe they had to face Ohio State again uh, next year, as well as as rest, as well as the rest of the, you know, mostly Big Ten West foes. I think it is how the schedule broke out. 
Um, and, you know, if you have a Nebraska type that seems like they're on the rise and, and a Wisconsin that, you know, is probably going to take a, a, a better direction under Luke Fickle after, you know, a, a mediocre first year. So I think that this program, you know, long term, I think is going to be good under Ryan Walters. It's definitely, a, you know, a, a philosophical shift from where Purdue has liked to be, you know, high flying offense with like you guys, like with the guys you mentioned, Brom Tiller, those guys like to throw the ball a lot and score a lot of points. And, and it just, it feels like with you have, you have a defensive coach who's, you know, going to hopefully overhaul this defense. And I think he will. And like I said, I thought they played better uh, than what the numbers showed you because the offense put them in, in a lot of different, you know, tough spots with special teams errors and, and, and turnovers. So they were just put in a lot of tough spots. So I think defensively, if you can get that defense into um, a, a place that's hovering around the top 50, I think you should be able to score um, with the with the likes of what you want to bring in um, uh, through the transfer portal, through the high school rankings, if they have the guy running the offense, that is the guy. And I've had my qualms about Graham Harrell this year. I I thought after um, it was either the Michigan game or the game thereafter, I thought you know they should they might want to think seriously about moving on because the offense is really struggling, um, and, and just feels like that they weren't heading in a, in a good direction now. You know, he's going to get a whole another year. He has a whole another year with Hudson Card for the offseason and this offense. So maybe that in, improves things and what they want to do. But it, you just look at the talent that they have out wide. I don't know. Um, they don't have a lot of experience coming back. They have a lot of new faces, uh, whether it be through high school recruiting or the transfer portal or the young guys that were on the roster that decided to stick around. It's, it's going to take a lot of development from that position specifically for this offense to improve and, and compete with the likes of Ohio State, Oregon, um, and, and Notre Dame, and, and even Oregon State, who, you know, even though they're leaving or, or being left behind um, to be on their own, they're still going to be a, a pretty good program and a pretty good defensive team um, under their new coach, who's the defensive minded as well. So it's all about the offense um, and can. Ryan Walters put enough trust in Graham Harrell, or if he's not the right guy, you know, somebody else that's going to improve this offense, because I think long-term defensively, they're going to be fine. Yeah. I mentioned the 2023 out of conference schedule being solid and difficult in terms of depth, three difficult games, but this one, even though Indiana state's there, Notre mm -hmm. Dame and Oregon state, and then you throw that on top of Ohio state, Penn state, Oregon, good yeah. Lord. Uh, it's a difficult schedule. We did a exercise here, Bryce, when the 2024 Big Ten schedule was released to basically say, this is what, and we went through everyone, and especially the star contrast is in the West, of course, to say, this is what a previous schedule would look like. And you're basically replacing roughly three games. It'll depend on the year, but three or four games, you're replacing whatever it is. Northwestern, Nebraska, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, the permanent mm -hmm. opponents are Indiana and Illinois, but you're replacing a semblance of those with an additional game or two from current Eastern Division teams. So those could be Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, et cetera. And then the addition of typically it's going to be two of the Pac-12 four each and every season. So it's obviously just, completely upgraded the schedule for pretty much everyone, but especially the teams in the West. Yeah. And, and like you said, if you, you know, run down the schedule, it's, it's just absolutely brutal. And you, you see programs that, you know, are hopefully improving just like Purdue is. I mean, Northwestern, you know, had a, you know, a really good year under a new coach and they're, they seem to be trending up and, and Michigan state has a new coach, but you know, all indications are that, you know, they might, be improved next year with you know Aiden Childs coming in as their quarterback and you know you expect a, a, an upgrade in that position an upgrade in, in head coach by by a lot um, like I said Wisconsin Nebraska all all seem like they're in, improving um, and in, you're a program that's hoping to improve improve along with them and and if you're going to be you know fighting for your fifth or sixth or seventh win it's it's going to be difficult because there's no let ups in this schedule there's no you know, weeks off where you can take or or it looks like an easy win outside of, you know, Indiana State or maybe an IU because um, it, it just feels like all these games are either, you know, you're going to be an underdog or it's going to be a 50-50 coin flip type game. And and 
that's not doesn't spell a whole lot of hope for a coach in, in a program that is hoping to, you know, get to that, you know, seven to nine win mark every single season, unless you improve drastically um, and you develop what you have on your roster or you go out and recruit well, um, like I think Ryan Walters has done for at least this class that's coming in, that's ranked, you know, in the top 30 in the country. And you need to be doing that every single year, as well as, you know, doing what you can in the transfer portal to pick up a couple of guys that are going to be either impact guys right away or add some serious depth. So there's not a big drop off from your starters. Folks, please like the video and uh, you can catch Bryce's work there. As you see host of the uh, behind the rail of Purdue football there on the believe network, Bryce, before we let you go, I want to make sure that people sure we're, we're displaying the information there, but the best way to find you and track your work and how, often the uh podcast posts yeah it's uh it's a uh, now that we're not in season it's more of just a, about a once a week uh show when we're wrapping up you know national signing day um transfer portal a, as well um just you know follow it on you can find it on youtube you can find it on uh any podcast uh platform just search behind the rails or you can search my name um or you can find it on social media on on x or facebook uh you can find clips on Instagram or TikTok as well. So pretty much any any platform out there, you can you can find it. Just search my name or uh, behind the rails and you should be able to find it. All right, Bryce. Thank you so much for stopping by, breaking things down for us. All righty, thank you.